Coming to you from our opulent and luxurious 4x8 refurbished broom closet at the National Headquarters in Indianapolis. With duct tape, studio lights, and a mic that you barely can hear, we hope to entertain and educate you. This is the Tango Alpha Lima Podcast. They call me crazy because I'm facing all my giants. They try to scare me into thinking I can't fight it. They tell me I should never even think of trying. But that's just me. I'm going to live out in defiance. All right, we are joined today, obviously, by a very special guest, uh, Secretary of the VA, Mr. McDonough. Thank you for taking some uh, time out of your day. I'm thrilled to be with you guys. Thanks for having me. We're going to hit it hard here because I know you have to be up on stage, but we will start today with Jeff. Good. And my question is of technical nature. Yes. Uh, In this day and age of using smartphones for everything, does the VA have plans to create an app that would uh, have the features of, like, the My Health EVET page? Yeah. So um, I want to tell you what the plan is on or where we are in my health event. Then I want to list a couple of new apps that are coming. Um, But I want to start with a a slightly different point, if you don't mind. We're going through the EHRM, the Electric Health Record Modernization. And I want to tell this story real quick because it should give you a a look into how I'm thinking about my job. When I was... uh, Coming into the office, they said, hey, we got to make a decision about the portal for the e- for the electronic health record. So we need you to make that decision. And I said, well, what do you mean I need to make that decision? They said, well, it's time to make that decision. I said, yeah, but I'm not a user. And the whole idea of the electronic health record is for us to get closer to the user experience. I said, so why wouldn't we ask vets whether they prefer the portal through my healthy vet? or some new proposal, for example, from Cerner. And so as a result, we went out through the Veteran um, Experience Office, and we've been running basically a focus group of users to ask them, ask our vets, hey, what's the best portal for you? Is it the existing My Healthy Vet? Is it something different? And most importantly, what are the attributes of it that make it useful? And so I think consistent with your question, I want to make sure that when we're developing new technology, we're developing it from, as by the way, every other company and provider in the United States does, from the perspective of our customers, the vets. So I hope that experience ends up making that portal for EHRM even better than what we're experiencing with My Healthy Vet. First point. Second point. Right now, the My Healthy Vet uh, website is optimized. The website is optimized for mobile device. So um, that means I don't feel a lot of pressure to get a new application uh, because I think it's working pretty well on uh, mobile uh, devices through the website. Mm -hmm. But we'll watch and see if the feedback says something different about that. We are hitting the street uh, with, or we just hit the street uh, with the prescription refill mobile app. We're pretty good experience so far on that and we'll continue to generate data on that. We have um, basically a new uh, mobile application available at both Apple and Google Play stores. which can be found by searching at the app stores for, quote, VA health and benefits, unquote. So that's kind of a flagship application. And then in September, we're going to launch the VA Health Hub app, which will be a complement to the VA health and benefits app. So we do have applications available. We're trying to take this in, at least from the consumer's perspective, I think, from a logical uh, development position, but on healthy my healthy vet, I think right now we're focused. We will continue to focus on the kind of optimized for um, for mobile uh, website. All right. Well, I appreciate there you that. Go. Great. I, I do love the my healthy vet. I think it works great. I, I'm on it all the time. It keeps me. I keep hearing that. Yeah. And which which automatically made me super suspicious of somebody who came in and said, well, we want to try out this new portal. And I said, well, actually, you know what? We've got a pretty good one yeah. that 
we hear from vets yeah. is workable. Uh, and, you know, we have 5 million regular user, re- regular entrants in yeah. My Healthy Vet. That's a lot of data and a lot of experience that we should use to make sure that we're yeah. optimizing. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. So, sir, thank you for joining us. Thank I'm you. Gonna, I'm going to take it over to some COVID questions, if Great. you will. Uh, I know that the VA has been doing a lot in regards to administering vaccines, and I'd like to know a little bit more about how you see the, the VA as a uh, conduit to helping others understand not only the importance of the vaccine, uh, but what American Legion members need to know about the vaccine and how the VA is moving forward uh, with all of the adaptations that we've had to make between yeah. 2020 and moving forward. Yeah, well, well first of all, uh, maybe I'll start this answer with a thanks uh, to American Legion for being such a partner with us in communicating to our vets, uh, to vets, in a way that helps us um, maintain fidelity to the science, uh, which is in candor frequently changing. And so uh, that can lead to some both confusion, exhaustion, or even in some cases, cynicism. And so the fact that we can uh, work with you and have the importance of your validation is really uh, meaningful to us. One, two, I, I like the way you started the question because I've seen, you know, we, we put, um, we were the first federal agency to put in place a mandate. And it flowed from a very simple concept, which is I want every vet who comes into a VA facility to have confidence that we've done everything possible to ensure a healthy environment when that vet arrives. And we've got a lot of great experience in these 18, 20 months now um, with PPE procurement, with qua- cross coordination between uh, VAMCs and even between VISNs on sharing information and even sharing uh, material and technology. Um, but the one place where frankly we've lagged is having our personnel vaccinated. We started a process when I, f- I announced the first vac- uh, man- vaccine mandate about five weeks ago, in fact, five, five weeks ago tomorrow, because it ends three we- the, this period, the warm up period ends in three weeks, three weeks from tomorrow on the 22nd of September. And we are at about, I'd want to say 75% overall vaccinated, maybe a little higher. Um, and as of this morning, I just got an update with about half of our healthcare personnel having attested to their status. About 85% say they're fully vaccinated. Another four to five percent say they're partway vaccinated on the way to get the second shot. And then the remaining 10% are in either I'm not vaccinated and they may have an exemption there, a religious or a healthcare exemption. Uh, so they're either saying I'm not vaccinated or they're saying, I'm not gonna tell you. Those are the three options they have to tell us. So the reason this is important again is I want vets who come in for care, especially for example, when the flu season heats up in about six weeks. Somebody's coming in, he's dehydrated, he needs support. I want when him when he comes in, first of all, I wanna make sure that we have our staff there. They're not out sick with COVID. But I also want them to know that they shouldn't be dissuaded from coming in because they're worried they might contract COVID. Absolutely. And so if you need flu, if you need rehydration because you're really suffering through the flu, which happens as we know, and in a moderate, a moderate season, as many as 15 to 20% of our beds in hospitals are filled with flu patients. Right now we're at 50, 60% of our beds filled with COVID patients. If that number grows and infection among our workforce grows, we won't be in a position to take care of our vets. So um, 
let me stop there because I'm, I'm afraid I got off on a little tangent there and I didn't answer your question. So, <laughs> Sir, um, you're, you're, you're on a good. roll. You're on a roll. <laughs> okay. We're a very casual group. So you're doing great. I think in regards to everything that has happened, yes. I think the VA has done a, a tremendous job in trying to push forward, set the standard, communicate. Yeah. Uh, I have read countless Vantage Point blogs about whether it's caregivers or yeah. veterans from different, you know, visions, uh, out, just folks out in the field who are going above and beyond to make everyone feel comfortable yeah. coming to the VA. So with that, I will, I will pass the next question along to my colleague, Mark. Great. Mm -hmm. Well, so I, I would be remiss if I didn't say that uh, your Rotabush facility in Indianapolis is the best one in the country. Now, I haven't been to all of them, but I'm <laughs> pretty confident saying Rotabush is I keep is hearing the best. that. At every facility I visit that everybody says, hey, this is the best one. And yeah. uh, so I, I haven't been to Indianapolis yeah, yet. But I, I like Rotobush is, is pretty solid. My question is, and a little bit of this is anecdotal because I was in, in Afghan. I served in Afghanistan, yeah. and I talked to a lot of the guys from my unit, obviously. The last two weeks have been very, very tough uh, from a mental health standpoint yes. for all of us. And I'm wondering how much you've seen that on your end and, and what sort of proactive measures you're taking to, to reach out to some of those of us who, you know, yeah. might not necessarily have ongoing mental health needs, but right now are, are experiencing some difficult times. Yeah. Well, first of all, I want to say to you, thank you. Sir. Um, and I want to say uh, to all the vets, I hear you. And what do I mean by that? Um, you know, I've been texting all morning with friends who are Afghan vets. And it's a, a range of emotions uh, from anger. And, look, I, I want to be very careful here, but there are a lot of vets who are pissed off. Mm -hmm. It's palpable. And not only palpable, but it's justified. Some vets disillusioned, some vets disappointed, um, and some vets seeing that set of images and feeling, again, more isolated. And so when I say I hear you, that's what I mean, is I hear that those emotions that you're experiencing are the emotions you're experiencing, and those are justifiable and natural and uh, understandable and so we've been preparing for this moment although I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that we understood it would be as tumultuous as it would sure. but we did know that this moment of transition would be a uh, an important moment mm -hmm. so we've been communicating through many of the um, vehicles tools we've our instruments we've already mentioned through our blog um, in a very concerted fashion throughout the summer, but we've intensified it in the last uh, two weeks. Um, and we thought it was really important for us to get out uh, a s established set of resources so other federal agencies could use those and send them out, uh, Congress could use those and send them out, uh, and we're staying really close to your, your team mm -hmm. uh, to both understand what our, what vets are experiencing, but also what they will need. Right. So a couple of things that are really important, I think, is uh, our vet centers are too little understood, uh, but terrifically impactful uh, organizations. There's three here, Mesa, West Valley, and Phoenix itself. I was in the West Valley um, Vet Center yesterday. Five counselors, all vets, two combat vets. These are experienced counselors who are, you know, they're available in that storefront, you know, business hours all week. Um, and they know what it's like to go through what so many of our vets are going through. So one, we're urging people to get to our vet centers. Two, we're urging people to go see what else is available in terms of VA services at www.mentalhealth.va.gov. Okay. Um, and then where, I'm gonna get to a little bit of data in a second. 
we're also urging vets who find themselves in crisis to use the Veteran Crisis Line. 1-800-273-8255, then press 1. I'll say it again, 800-273-8255, then press 1. Or text us on the Crisis Line at 838-255. One last thing, uh, just a little bit of data. We've been watching this data very, very closely. I briefed the president and the first lady about this on Saturday afternoon. And what we're seeing is a steady uptick over the course of the two weeks. We just took a two weeks, uh, basically, slice of the data from basically uh, two weeks ago, uh, Friday to last mm -hmm. Friday. And what we saw there, and that coincides with the steady it uptick in news out yeah. of Afghanistan, which then intensifies last week, obviously. Sure. Text up substantially, probably 30% on year on year, day, you know, so um, August 23rd, 2021 versus August 23rd, 2020. Chat up 90%. Uh, overall calls up about 7%. What that tells me is a couple things. Younger vets are likelier to use text and chat than calls. Yep. So indication of uh, developing crisis among younger vets, right? Um, Afghanistan is a factor, as we can tell from the data, but by far not the only factor, mm -hmm. but surely is an aggravating factor. So what does that tell us then? Most importantly, I think it tells us, and what the data also tells us is, please make sure that we're checking on buddies. What we know is, like we, I recognize we have a bar to get over, especially with our younger vets. Trust, our trust scores among younger vets decidedly less than among older vets. So there's a credibility hurdle for us. We know that vets are likelier to come into, our con into care with us after having been referred by a friend out of a buddy check conversation. So please make sure that folks are out there talking to their buddies and then we'll continue to pump out our information and then continue to make sure that we're doing things like this, which is so valuable for us to have an opportunity with you to get to vets, uh, to make sure they're aware of what's available. Absolutely. Well, we will, uh, we will, of course, continue to uh, urge our people to use the VA as we always do. Secretary, I, I really appreciate you taking time out of your day. We're getting the uh, kill switch signal in the back here, so I think there's about 6,000 people waiting on you out there. <laughs> uh, well, thanks so much. I hope, my, I hope my questions or my answers weren't too long. Absolutely. No, they were, so, they were I think, thank you. I think they'll be, you know, very eye-opening for everyone else. And awesome. We, we appreciate it. I so appreciate you. you guys. Thank you.